Hello and welcome to Who Corners Hi. the Corner podcast. Uh, I'm Jeff and I'm joined as always by my good friend Paul. That's me. Hi. There's, there's Paul. Uh, he's wearing a Star Wars t-shirt today. Today is Star Wars Day. It is May yes. the 4th. That is why I am themed, although I've yes. got a Star Trek hat on, so yes, I'm, I'm did, sort of yeah. multi-branded. I, I yeah. don't know why I haven't got a Star Wars hat, actually. I need to get a Star Wars yeah. hat. I woke up this morning with that thought foremost in my mind, and did it you? was like a, it's kind of like a panic sweat, you know, when you sort of wake up after a heavy nightmare or something. That's how <laughs> anxious I was about this. So I need oh, to address that right it's away. It's e- easily fixable. Can you get I want one a with... Blue Harvest uh, one there. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, see, that's yeah? obscure. Can't exactly. you get one with yeah. Rogu ears coming out? Just... The only good Star Wars. That's all you like, Star Wars. Uh, honestly, you are such a wuss when it comes to this stuff. You just like the cute little green baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing gatekeeper here, by the way, yes, and I'm fully are, yeah. playing that card. So don't even go there. Right, let's concentrate on Doctor Who okay, then before so, we get into a, a vicious row. Yeah, but I can't argue because I don't know enough about well, it. Well, you could, but yeah, I'll just rinse you. <laughs> so this week we're going to do um, a QA. and a Yes. So we put out a tweet, uh, well, a couple of tweets, asking for uh, some questions that people would mm-hmm. be interested in hearing us answer, some topics that um, you know they thought could be quite good for the podcast. So we're going to look at some of the general questions that we yeah. had um, come in. So I'm going to kick this off with one from Simon Hart, who's at Cy underscore Hart. And his question is, should Doctor Who be fun or should it be dark? Oh, so we, we're starting with um, with a nice, light, easy yeah. question to answer then. <laughs> I, I did see your response to this one, actually. I think you were getting quite excited about, about answering this. Yeah, well, I know what my answer is. Go on is. then, yeah. go on then. Uh, I think it should be uh, a little bit of both, uh, but more fun than dark. I mm. think that um, Doctor Who is a show with a lead character who's essentially optimistic, hopeful, uh, positive, um, kind, uh, uh, and adventurous, um, and I think the show should be fun, should be enjoyable. I think you know we we should get a bit scared in it. I think there should be you know dark moments in it. You know that that are you know moral uh, you know questions, ambiguities, and things like that. Mm. But I I think um, there I've seen some people, and I'm not saying this is sci at all, who who uh, feel that it should be really dark and i and i don't get that at all it's like saying the simpsons shouldn't be funny uh, <laughs> you know it's it seems like the opposite of what the show is is a sen- is largely and essentially about and i think that you know i really like series 8 and series 9 mm. with um capaldi uh, as anyone who listens to the podcast will know i have defended and will continue to do so sleep no more and kill the moon indeed um, indeed fly and that flag jeff yes I will. climb that hill but <laughs> stand and defend it <laughs> but i do think that those two mm. seasons are quite dark uh and um you know sort of quite heavy going and, and complex and and whilst i you know i like i like that um you know i'm not sure it works kind of for for the general audience, for the casual fan, uh, and and like it or not, the show needs to appeal to, you know, everyone. It's it's you know looking at Star Wars. Star Wars has got a tough job as well. It's trying to appeal to, you know, the the, the fans who've been there since you know seventy seven or whatever it is. People like me who only care about Grogu, and and people who only <coughs> like you know, Ray or whatever. Mm. Do you know what I mean? There's there's all this yeah. stuff, and so you know with Star Wars you get. You know, I guess a show like Andor, which is a little mm. bit more adult, and Rogue One, and you know, you get the animations and, and stuff, which obviously that you know aimed at a different audience and stuff. Whereas Doctor Who doesn't, you know, have that as such. Uh, certainly not, you know, recently. Anyway, anyway, so I I think yes, a little bit of dark is good. Um, but you know, uh, when I say dark, to me that is kind of uh, you know angsty. Uh, you know. Like it, it's mm. it's not just a mild scare. It's do you know what I mean. It's it's um. It's geared for an older audience. Is that is that what yeah, you mean? Yeah, I, th- I it's think a bit so. More challenging. It's, it's a bit more challenging. A bit and more, it, uh, uh, you know, nihilistic in its approach. Yeah, perhaps. you know, I once I once saw some some tweets that said, mm. um, oh, "Well, my idea for a se- season of Doctor Who is the companion dies in the first episode, murder, <laughs> and and the and the Doctor has to go on on a." on a quest to some sort to, of crusade or something to, yeah to avenge yeah. this death and, and mm, you know, stop avenge. it from happening yeah you know? okay and I thought mm. what really 
in Doctor Who. You know. Well, do you know um, what? You could argue we kind of had that with uh, Face the Raven through to Hell Bent, that three part. If you think of that as a as a three part story, yeah. Clara dies in the first episode, and then is the 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 kind of vengeance of the Doctor sort of fuels the next two episodes of that and eventually restores her back to life. Yeah, I'm going to cut that because that's just defeated my uh, my issue. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's true. But it, you know, this that's but, uh, yeah, that's I know diff- what you, mean. you know, she she mm. uh, she uh, gave her life. Um, you know, it's different to be murdered. You know, do you know what mm. I mean? There's a difference in that and and something kind of a much a victim darker. of the Time Lord's yeah. ill-conceived trap. Yes, mm. trap street. So, uh, what do you think? Should it be dark or should it be fun? Or I, I totally agree with you. I, th- I think it's got to be both of these things. Mm. Um, I, I can see where where they're coming from, and uh, you know, when I think back to my journey through fanhood, right? So, I, um, you know, when I was growing up, as I've said here on a podcast before, it was Brains of Morbius, Philip Hinchcliffe era, and all the rest of it. And I, you know, I wasn't I wasn't that interested in it. I'd sort of catch a casual glimpse of an episode. Um, and then when I came into it, it was season eighteen, which is not necessarily dark, but it's certainly very complex. It's not, it's not laugh a minute heavy. It's not like mm. the previous season, um, season seventeen, which is more of a pantomime type of Doctor Who, and which, as I became a fan in the eighties, was constantly derided by the kind of fanzine writers and voices of the day pre-internet. So season 17 was nothing to be looked at. The Hinchcliffe era was the best. And season 18, well, I think people were still kind of getting their heads around. But I, I loved season 18 and, and, and always will do. And it is, it is quite dark. Um, and when I think of some of my favourite episodes from both the classic and the new series, a lot of my favourites are actually the darker episodes. Mm. So things like Caves of Androzani, for example, which is which is really grim and it's it's unrelentingly grim it gets grimmer as it goes through and the doctor's driving force throughout that changes and kind of narrows down like a tiny spotlight so that in the end you know there's no way he can save everybody on the planet there's no way that's not going that's ever going to happen the only thing he can do even at the cost of his own life is save Perry's life and and he almost fails to do that right at the very end he almost fails but you know and it's it's and, and i love that but saying yeah. that i wouldn't want every single doctor who story yeah. to be uh, like I that that's, that's the thing so good yeah and i think uh, a lot of the attraction for me for the character of the doctor is that as you said they are optimistic and 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 the thing i always like even when i didn't really watch it back in the day you know during my very early years what well, one thing i did notice very quickly about the the character is that the doctor always res- i mean this is tom baker we're talking about really you know he always responded to a threat by making a joke mm-hmm. and i love that mm-hmm. you know and i still love that to this day i i did it at school when i was you know when people wanted to beat me up and stuff i was like oh, yeah well, you just got a big nose, mate, and you know it wouldn't stop me getting beaten up, particularly. Yeah. But still, <laughs> you know, it, it didn't it didn't exacerbate situations. You know, it, it, and, and and actually, in a lot of ways, even in adult life, doing that diffuses situations. I've been in corporate meetings that have just been ridiculously heavy and mm. and 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 just stupid. You know, and people sort of um, you know sort of power grabbing and everything else. And I'll just make a stupid joke, and it just cuts through all the bullshit. Yeah. You know, and, and I love that. And I think if Doctor Who ever becomes one note, then that's the end of it. Whether it's continually dark, whether it's continually lighthearted, whether it's continually soap opera, or whatever label you want to throw at it, it, it that a, a massive success, a, a massive part of its success is that ability to sort of fluctuate between light and dark, comedic and heavy and yeah. complex and fun and panto or whatever you want to call it. And I think what we what we do is is, is fans you know the kind of standard again i'm going back to this fan journey and using my own experience as, as an example but you know when you're a kid you respond to the light-hearted moments they're the things that kind of grab you and the scares and the monsters and you know as long as the doctor's a kind of reassuring force and tells jokes you know pokes fun at the monsters and that that's kind of good that that, that sort of brings you in when you get into your late teens and maybe you're doing a levels and and then you start you know looking at starting a degree course in something the arts usually right <laughs> you know um and, and you start to understand a bit more about um you know how how things are composed 
you, you know, it, it's very easy to think, well, yeah, I, I love all this dark stuff, and Doctor Who needs to be like that. I'm more adult now. I need Doctor Who to be more adult. I don't like the childish stuff. Yeah. You know, I liked it when I was a kid. You know, but now throw me something that's aimed at the intelligent nine, ten year old. That's not for me. I want it all to be like the caves of Androzani. That's that's quite um, an easy trap, I think. I think to fall into. Yeah, it's a bit of. Um, I sometimes wonder whether people think, well, I, ca I can't admit that I like this show, <clears throat> whether it's Doctor Who or whatever, because it's perceived as being a kids show, and therefore it needs to be, uh, you know. It needs to be more adult for me to be able to safely say yeah, I like yeah, it or yeah. something. You Very know? possibly. I mean, I, I remember watching um, watching Warriors of the Deep when I was a when I was a kid. So the first time it it, tran it transmitted when was that? Nineteen eighty two, eighty three, yeah. whatever it was, round about then. Anyway, and I wrote a letter into Points of View saying it was too childish. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. But again, you know, what was I? 14, 13, mm. 14 at the time. So. You know, yeah. it's, it's that kind of mid-teens, to, mid to late yeah. teens, I think, when you think, yeah, I want it to be grown up, because I, I, like you said, I love this program, but maybe, and, and I think it's less so nowadays than it used to be in the 80s, when it was definitely frowned upon. Mm. Nowadays, I think it's perceived as uh, just generally a, a popular show on yeah, on uh, TV exactly. for anyone I, really you know, you know I, whereas I in in the you know in the 80s it was definitely you know well this is an old hat it's an old kid show it's been going for so many years uh, now it's all kind of you know pantomime guest casting and mm. you know funny costumes and <clears throat> blah 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 yeah no i i think there is less uh, perception of it like, mm. like that these days but yeah i i agree i think the show needs to have run you know run the, the gamut of all sorts of uh, you know, light and dark, and you know, scary and you know, silly, and you know, yeah. and it's ideally suited to be able to do that. It is, so, yeah, it's that know, format, isn't unlike, it? You know, I mean, you can look shows, at something. You, know. <laughs> you look at something like Journey's End, which to me is the perfect example of a kind of light slash dark episode. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's not one of my favourites, and it, you know, but I I totally get that a lot of the younger people who watch that for the first time have the same sort of response to that. That you know, the very best of the Philip Hinchcliffe or, you know, John Nathan Turney has had, mm -hmm. had for me. You know, when it is kind of, you know, it's it's adventurous, it's fun, it's yeah. exciting, it's, it's very self-aware of all the elements that make it, you know, a kind of punch in the air. It's aware of the cliffhanger, yeah. you, you know, and the power that that can have. And I think it's the only story in the modern era that has had that, power to keep people guessing over yes. the course of the week in the interim yeah, period between amazing. episodes one and two yeah. to what's going to happen you know and, and yeah i i remember you know i watched that whenever it was out when was i in sort of mid 30s or something yeah. and i thought oh this is just childish but absolutely of course well, it is but why you know, not you know that's the thing it's it's important i think to remember like going back to what i was saying about Mm. You know, the show is trying to appeal to, you know, a number of different age groups and stuff. And, you know, sometimes it, it's not going to 100% appeal to you because it's, it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's a bit like Star Wars. People who hate the prequels, well, there's, there's kids who love them who are now exactly up. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and the people who hate the sequels there's kids who love them and, and that's, and that, that's, know, that's their route into Star Wars, yeah, isn't it? You exactly. know, that's their and, way in. And, you know, it's... it's it's it cannot always be made for you. No, you know I exactly. Mean? I, I like to look at it as, as as a bus. So the whole production of Doctor Who is basically just driving this bus around and making modifications yeah. as they go. And as fans, it's up to us to you know to decide we want to jump on that bus. Yeah. And you know decide to stay on it or get off at the next stop, and, walk down yeah. a few streets and join it when they've done a few more yeah. mods or something. And, and for me, once I'm on the bus, mate, I'm on the bus. They'd have well, to do something the, pretty. Tragic yeah. to make me jump yeah. off the bus exactly. willingly. Sometimes the uh, the ride is smoother than others, but oh, always, that's good. Oh, we're always, working metaphors today, mate. <laughs> there's always something to enjoy. On yes, the Doctor Who bus. Mm. So, right, there next question. Next Thank you, question. Uh, do you have one, or shall I go? Um, I, 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 I've got one. I've got one open on on Twitter here, which uh, which I do like. Um, so uh, this is from Salty Space Girl, who's contributed quite a few things to our podcast. Yeah, hello. So thank you, Salty Space Girl. Um, at Salty real name is. Girl. Um, and, and they say, are there any companions you felt were even more of a reason to watch than The Doctor? For me, it was Joe Grant and Sarah Jane Smith, even though I loved 3 and 4. So I guess is um, this one for, you know, does the companion 
Um, or are there any companions that would really make you want to watch the, the show? So you're more interested in, in them and their journey than you are perhaps the Doctor's journey. So do you tune in just to watch Leela or Adric or Donna Noble or you know, Rory in your case? Because I know you love Rory. Oh, I do you? like Rory. You, you yeah. really do. You, th- yeah. you think he's great. Yeah. He, he, uh, <laughs> he would absolutely would have uh, gotten Amy Pond, you know. There you go. Yeah. And, well, and, you know, strange things do happen, my Well, they friends, do. You know? <laughs> Not that. <laughs> uh, would a, a companion that mm. I would watch for over the Doctor? Um, hmm. Mm. Well, I watch the show because I like it. Um, hmm, I don't really thought of that about that before. I mean, obviously, it's I, an interesting yeah, one. I think it is an interesting. Yeah. I have I have a major soft spot for for Clara. Um, but I don't. I wouldn't say I watched it. Just I. I, I didn't watch the sh- show just mm. because of her, and I'm not watching it because I preferred her to the Doctor because I I liked their pairing. Mm. Uh, you know, it would be interesting to see Clara with a, another Doctor. You know, and see how that would play. But you know, I think we sort of said before that some. Uh, companions are so intrinsically kind of mm. linked to to their doctors, and and that's for me is Clara and Twelve. You know, I really like Yaz, um, and and you know, very much enjoy you know Mandip's work on it. But I wouldn't I, tune in what, just just to see yeah. that if you yeah, you know, just I, to see I, her I think journey. I see it as you know, it's it's a team, it's a pairing, yeah. You know, whatever it might be, and you know. That's it's an interesting one because I I think you know the the role of the companion since day one has always been the viewer's link yeah. to the fantastic world of, of, of Doctor Who. Yeah. So and I and I think this is probably something well, I don't know actually I mean may, maybe it's not I was going to say it's probably something more of a, a modern series thing where the characters have have, have been fleshed out a lot more. We've yeah. been we've yeah. been party to a lot more of their inner thoughts. Mm. We've we've seen them put through the mill. We've seen them change, you know, their yeah. their their mindset and their attitudes and behaviours throughout the course of the show. We've seen their characters develop to a much greater degree than we ever really did in yeah. the in the old series. Um, possibly with the exception of those that um, Salty Good Space Girl points out. Actually, Joe Grant, Sarah Jane Smith, where we yeah. did have quite a nice little sort of arc if you like through 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 their through, through their yeah. through the characters I, times with the doctor I, I'd agree with that I think um you know and it's not a slight but it's because mm. it's, it's kind of how things were uh, you know on telly to an extent back then but you know a lot of the characters they they don't have a a particularly kind of strong or defined arc No exactly well no. Joe Grant and well Joe Grant never really had much of a backstory no. apart from the fact she she failed her A levels in science yeah. or or something you know And it's just what it was like back back mm. you know with shows then and and um and that, and like I said it's not a slight at all but it's 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 not quite the same um you know comparison but it's it's a bit like the Simpsons again you know you know those characters and their, mm. you know, their personas and how they, you know, do the blah blah blah. And no, there's never any evolution in them. You know, there might be a sort of learning within an episode, but it, it doesn't. Well, last they've been them. the same age for the last forty yeah, well, that, years. Yes, yeah. so you know, that's it. You know, nobody changes or, or <laughs> yeah. grows, and then you know, you it's the same. You, yeah, it's you look at something same. like, um, uh, mm. oh, I can't think of another show off the top of my head, but you know where where there's a, a growth and a change in the character, and you know we we do get that in in modern who, mm. you know, but but in, in the past, so and especially a secondary character as well, isn't it? Because uh, yeah. you know as much as we love the companions, they are secondary to the Doctor. I, yeah. I think they they do take the limelight on occasion, episodes like. Turn left, for example, which yeah. focuses on Donna Noble. Flatline, flatline, which which gives Clara quite a quite a fair bit to do. Which again, I think, is a is a modern series thing. It, it, I don't yeah. recall it really happening much no. in the classics. I mean, maybe Horns of Nimon, Horns of Nimon gives Romana more to do, perhaps than than she usually did. So there's yeah. a bit more focus on her. Um, but it's very very rare, I think. Mm. Mm. You know that happened, but um, yeah, I don't know. Actually, I mean, for, for me, I I think I'm with you, Jeff. Actually, I don't think I would necessarily tune in specifically to watch a companion. Um, but it's but yeah, I, I don't know. It's an interesting question, actually. Given, I think, given that the the companion's role, as I said, was to bring the the, the viewers in. Yeah. 
Mm, good yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, no you know, like, answer like you on said that. earlier, because you're on the Doctor Who bus, mm. um, and and you know you're you're staying on it. You watch it for all of it, where you know there's probably people who, you, you know, they may only watch because Billy's in it. If they like yeah, Billy, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. and, and that's and that's mm. fine. You know. Um, okay, thanks, Salty. That was a good a good question. Um, so I've got one from Ian Banks, who's at stuff Ian likes. Scariest and funniest story. Oh, that's a that's a good one, isn't it? Oh, I didn't see that one. Otherwise, I might have thought Talk about, about it. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. Have, you, have you got um, one in mind or a couple in mind? He, he did actually say stories, but I was trying to narrow it down. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm gonna say. Um, the Impossible Planet and the Satan Pit is, is always quite a scary one. Ooh, um, yeah, you know, yeah. the, the Ood going evil, um, mm. you know, and, and the sort of, um, you know, Toby and, the, you know, the tattoo things on the face and the, obviously the, the devil yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, and but, Gabriel but Wolf's voice. No, not Gabriel. Is it Gabriel Wolf? Yeah, He played maybe. Sutek, wasn't it? It's the same guy who did that. Um, but it's also that, that concept in it of... You know the 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 devil and and you know yes. that just being the body and the the um you know the the soul the personality or whatever you want mm. to call it being you know extracted from it um and it kind of reminded me a little bit of uh, the final season of Buffy they had what they called the first evil in it and it was it was the sort of manifestation of the first sort of evil thought or act in the history of the world mm. which I thought was quite a, quite a cool original concept. sin is it. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was thinking that's not what it's called, but yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that that's quite. A I never scary saw that one. final series of Buffy. Actually, sorry, go on. Go ahead. Yeah, no, it was, it was mm. good. Uh, another scary one. I mean, hmm. yeah, p- probably that. I would think. Mm. Um, you know, there's there's bits in like my my wife sometimes says, "Oh, Doctor Who's not scary." It's it's not, but. I can understand what is in it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And and why, you know, a, a younger viewer might be scared mm. by something. You know, so whilst I don't watch it and think, oh my god, I go, you know, hide behind the sofa. That you know, the stuff in the Impossible Planet <coughs> is scary. Yeah. You know, mm. or uh, you know, like I like hide, but it's it's not a it's not scary. It's a it's a spooky one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I'd say that. And then funniest. Um, I mean, never really does kind of out and out comedy episodes. Mm. Uh, some of the funniest moments uh, were uh, when Ten gets poisoned in the Unicorn and the Wasp. Oh yes, yes, I that is a good one. I yeah, had some laughing yeah. at that when when it first went out. Um, and one of my favourite little moments mm. is um, when Thirteen says. Um, some line about where about being late, and she she does this to gesture for watch, and she goes, "I'm not even wearing not even watch. wearing one. <laughs> it's, it's just for show." <laughs> and yeah. I thought that was really funny. Mm. Um, so yeah, funniest episode. Um, yeah, there's 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 you know there's moments in all of it, mm. you know, that, but there's not one that is sort of uh, you know a laugh riot as you know. Uh, what what about you? Um, I think actually, um, yeah, it's. I I, th- I think I mean scariest one. I, I I can only really think back to when I was a kid, really, and thinking, well, what scared me when I was when I was younger? And it was things I've probably said on here before. You know, there's certain scenes from the Brain of Morbius, the Ark in Space, City of Death with Scar off. Um, you know, the Count mm. sort of pulling off his face to reveal the the wormy mess beneath. So things like that freaks me out as a kid. But I obviously don't know because I'm much more mature. You know, and um, and I, I don't. I, I find things a bit more creepy. I mean, I want, what was the story with the peg dolls by Mark Gatiss? That was that was pretty oh, scary. I did not, find that quite disturbing. And someone just um, was it Night Terrors? Yeah, Night Terrors. I think, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've, I can't remember for the life of me what story is about, but that one just the you know those big weirdly yeah. inhuman. Faces just yeah. drifting out of and the they they move the weirdly darkness. as well. Yeah, so everything's kind of wrong and you yeah. know kind of weird about it. So that that's kind of freaky. I think Stephen Moffat actually has really pulled out some of the biggest scares yeah. of the modern well, series. Like, like Listen has got some. Mm. Uh, you know, I'd, uh, I should have mentioned that. Listen, you know, the bed scene is, is yeah, really yeah. Uh, you know un- unsettling. Uh, 
you know. So yeah, there's 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 definitely moments. I think. There, there's yeah. moments, yeah. And I yeah. think back to you know to, to my kids. So so Freya, who's been on here with us, her she cannot deal with uh, gas masks or even really? any masks anymore in real life. Right. Not since she watched. Um, what was it there? And it was the other Moffat. His first one wasn't it? The, the World War Two thing. What's oh, yeah. it called? Are you my mummy? I can't uh, really remember. Em- um, empty child. Empty child. That's it. Yeah. Well done, mate. Honestly. Yeah. And, uh, and and my eldest daughter, who, who really doesn't watch Doctor Who, Doctor Who she's only watched one episode, uh, or, and and it's because someone had brought it into school. Oh, to right. watch on a you know like last day of term or something, so she had to watch it, and it was, and it was um, it was Blink, and she, that totally freaked her out. So she can't. She never watched Doctor Who after that. Makes a point now that she cannot watch it, and uh, and just finds the whole idea of the the, the, the you know the angels just too much actually, to, to bear. Talking of the angels, that uh, um, yeah, Village of the Angels. Actually, I'd, I'd chuck that in there because mm, that's a good one. Again, yeah, it's, not, yeah, yeah. it's not scary, but what it is 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 tense, and um, you know that it escalates. You know, yeah. there is an element of uh, you know fear to it. It, it doesn't mm. sort of scare me, but but you know I watch it, and it you know it's exciting, and you know when you sort of picture yourself in that situation, do you know mm. what I mean? It's so I don't I don't. I don't watch it and actively feel scared. I, I rarely kind of get that unless it's yeah. Watching, I, I don't get know. scared, mate. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, I don't unless get it's scared um, or anything like that. Ugh. The woman in black or the Conjuring films—they're scary. Mm. Uh, <laughs> there's, I mean, there's also some moments in uh, I can't remember which episode it is, but it's it's one of the it's either Silence of the Library or Forest of the Dead. I think it might be Forest of the Dead. Either way, it's the, you know. Oh part yeah, of that. There's, oh yeah, there's some. And there's some, in there, um, yeah, yeah they, they, there's some freaky moments, particularly mm. with um, I can't remember. Mi- the, is Miss it Evangelista? Evangel- uh, that's it. Uh, yeah, yeah, her face is all uh, looks like a. That's it. Exactly yeah. that. Yeah. So that that's yeah. kind of creepy, but. Uh, but I, I think, and actually, to, on on the other one, the the fun stories, I can think of a few. I think the um, that that's a good one, the unicorn and the wasp, which has a good comedy moment. But I think also, actually, it's another Gareth Roberts one. It's uh, is the lodger. I find that mm. it's a lot of fun to watch. It's I yeah. think it's just played for comedy. It's played for laughs, and yeah. and Matt Smith and James Corden together in there are just fantastic. It's. It is a definite comedy moment. I think yeah, from the that's, that's a fair point actually. Yeah, that is one of the more sort of overall comedic. Of yeah, yeah, like Un- yeah. Unicorn and the Wasp. Actually, I suppose in fairness, you could say and and the Caretaker with mm. Capaldi. You know, they are um, yeah more leaning fully towards a comedy thing. Yeah, I think they're they're written with with that intent, yeah, aren't they? Rather than parts. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. I think um, from the old series, it would. It would actually have to be um, City of Death and possibly The Horns of Nine One again, which I just find a hoot. <laughs> it's a, and, and City of Death, actually, again, it's not. Do you know what? It, it is. I think City of Death is and Sharda actually. You know the two Douglas Adams stories. Mm. I think they are. They are intended as a comedy. I mean, it's it's Douglas Adams playing to his strengths. I think obviously City of Death, he didn't right out right it was a david fisher script initially but he pretty much rewrote it you know and it's and it's full of typical sort of douglas adams yeah. witticisms and tom baker you can see i mean you can see all of them and they just love that script and they're and they're just going with it you know they're, they're not hamming it up perhaps in the way that they are in the horns of nine months so it's a different kind of comedy but you know and, and it's the same with Sharda as well they're, they're having such a ball with both of those scripts and and I think Sharda's maybe not quite so funny but City of Death definitely yeah, would that's, get that's my vote for that great one, yeah, yeah. Um, okay uh, I've got another question here mm. this is uh, I've, I've screenshot this so I can't see the, the um, ha- uh, username I'm afraid oh. um, well uh, it's who's King Clive hyphen the third and hyphen is with a, a three uh, nice orphan fifty five reference there. Um, ah, I like it, yeah. So, given the release of the new documentary about the Blackpool exhibition, do you think one will or should be released about time fracture? I'd personally like to see a floor plan mm. or map of how it worked, and think it would make a fantastic coffee table book and a big finish audio. So, I, sp- I suppose really what I've done there is, is put a question out that only I can answer as I went to time fracture. Um, so, yeah, I, so, I didn't, sorry. I didn't say it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I remember when people when Time Fracture was mm. um, on, and I thought it was moving actually at some point, but no, it's, that's gone quiet. But um, when it was on, mm. 
people were sort of asking for it to get filmed so that you know you you could experience it but as nice as that would have been um i think it was not possible mm. because it relied so much on your interaction with the actors and things you know you you had a, yeah that was a, that's what made the experience that, that's right? its thing you know mm. you had a set path from the start to a certain point and then it deviates um and and then you have a you know set path again after that mm. so there's there's parts of it that you know could be filmed but you know the the routes through in in the middle part of it you know like we ended up with um uh uh, da Vinci, uh, and then um, you know El- Elizabeth the first, and then um, watching a, a Time Lord agent fight a space pig monster thing, and then <laughs> getting chased by Cybermen. Yeah, you know, and other people met Davros in there, and and Anood and stuff. You know, mm. so uh, like um, you know, the question says a a bit more about it. You know, what the floor plan was, what was there. You know, cause yeah. apparently there were. Um, you know, characters that they only appeared as occasionally, you mm. know, so it, it did have quite a lot of, you know, options to it. Um, but then that becomes, you know, hard to tell in book form or it's almost like a choose your own adventure type of thing. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Um, so, yeah, a bit a bit more of a record of it would, would have mm. been nice. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if anyone's listening, they went to Time Fracture. I hope they enjoyed it as, as much as me. It was it was great. And, you know, the... Um, the journey they had to, to be able to be open was mm. I felt so sorry for the the people oh, you know, know. Yeah. that you know it, it was uh, announced you know tickets and whatnot and then uh, you know COVID and it was delayed delayed and delayed and then it opened and then there was bad rain and it got flooded <laughs> and the set got wrecked and they had to re re they had to shut down again and, and put in a sort of specialist drainage system for it and then they reopened and then they got flooded again and, yeah you know it just it just all these delays and you know it was yeah awful but but the show itself was great and yeah and, you know it was, it was really good so yeah i, I right. think also i mean even for those of us who weren't there it, it could be quite an interesting document anyway you know well yeah i think uh, yeah absolutely i th- you know i'm saying i'm not sure telling the you know the story is is at all workable because of how mm. it, it was designed but you know to, to yeah the, the behind the scenes more, like you said i mean yeah, what yeah. you just described there the whole journey to getting the thing on mm. in the first place was uh you know is, is quite a yeah quite an adventure from mm. the sounds maybe, of things you know what, maybe, maybe there's a podcast in in there at some point about, about that yeah. um but yeah you know the the blackpool um you know thing and mm. You know, I'm I'm hopeful that they'll do a 60th anniversary, uh, you know, convention type thing later this year, and you know, to 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 get a bit more, you know, something shot at that would be mm. cool. You know, to to get interviews with people and things like that. Yeah. Uh, right. Have you got a question? I do. I have a nice easy one here. Actually, it's a short one, and it's from Clara. Chris at Chris Russ Chris R U S one, and oh. Chris asks. D- does Chris ask what's your favourite title sequence? Yeah, that's the one. He does, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well done, <laughs> I mate. I screenshotted that. <laughs> did you screenshot that one? Yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. there you go. So, go on, Ed. Okay. You can go first uh, on this all one. All right. Um, <clears throat> my favourite. I I like um, the Third Doctor's one. Mm. Um, it, it, you know, when it kind of... It, it, it's in colour for the first time and it's yeah. sort of, you know, weird <coughs> and, and trippy looking. Um, <laughs> but I, I also really like the second half of... 13's um, sequence where you see the star field. Oh, okay, yeah, and it and it starts twisting as, mm. as you sort of move through. It always makes me a little bit dizzy when I <laughs> when I watch it. it does it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know the the star thing is like it's like a, it's literally like a tunnel, and the star parts are moving differently to to each other. So I, I really like that. Um, mm. Yeah, they're, they're always um, fairly kind of you know simple, like the the tenth. Uh, uh, a doctor's one was just the you know the time vortex thing wasn't it and, and mm. 11s was a sort of variation on that i wasn't overly keen on 12s with the clocks and stuff it just felt a little bit i don't know it's a show about time you know um, <laughs> yeah. so, but you know to the mm. guy who mocked that up as a fan sequence on youtube and then got asked to make it for the show yeah exactly yeah you know that's brilliant it, mm. it you know it was great it looked really good it just you know, I, th- I think the mock-up actually was better than the one they yeah, did in, he, they, they in, in the actual it, show. It seemed a, stuff the mock-up a seemed a little bit faster. Yeah, I think they played. I think he did it to the previous theme version of the theme tune, like yeah, the tenant possibly, version which, anyway, which is a banging uh, mm, version, which is quite um, upbeat. 
Yeah. So uh, and and I do I do like um, is it in McCoy when you get the um, the three D Tardis and the, mm. and the sort of ball thing around it. That's quite yeah. cool. Uh, so, what's your favorite? so? Well, you haven't actually answered what your no, favorite I haven't is. Really you have to pick well, one. I, d- I didn't want to go in fair because I could just do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. What What would be yours? Oh, you just bottled it completely. I did. Then, I, I did. Yeah. 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 Mm, interesting. Okay. Well, I, I will repeat everything you said because I don't disagree with any of that really at all. Um, I have a lot of fondness for Tom Baker's. Um, time tunnel opening because yeah that's that's the thing that i I remember from from growing up but i think my absolute favorite the one that gets my goosebumps really prickling on my skin is um is 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 the fifth doctor's starfield Mm, opening i i love it and it's, it's quite simple and looks very 80s of its time um, but I think if I was to really pick one to take with me to my to my to my grave, it would be that one. And the way that it marries Peter Howell's uh, guitar arrangement of the theme as well is 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 brilliant. You know, it just everything matches the sequence, the timing. It's just it's just brilliant. And of course, it has a massive nostalgic value because you know that's obviously you know when I when I first really became yeah, a fan yeah. of the show, and every time I hear that initial. St- Ing from that guitar and synth, it just, yeah, it, it, it gets me going. But I, I, I will have a special recommendation. I, oh, what's it? Highly commended for um, for the Thirteenth Doctors, as you said, because I think that's astonishing. I think it's mm. stunningly good. Yeah, and it's, it's um, nicely done. It's a bit different. And also, you know. yeah, and also McCoy's um, open as well, because yeah. similar similar reasons actually. Because I, you know, only think that that's an early. Um, I mean, gosh, they, the way they did that. I mean, yeah, it's computer design, but it was painstaking, right? Because mm-hmm. each one of those frames had to be drawn. There was no real software that would generate no, elements no, no, for you. Each no. element had to be created. It had to be mapped, and it had to be done frame by frame by frame. And it's it's an astonishing piece. Yeah. Of, and actually, that gives you vertigo as well because there's a moment mm-hmm. when the is it when the the when we, I can't remember what it is, but it, there's a moment when the whole galaxy... Oh, yeah, the TARDIS comes in. It's wrapped in a bubble, and the whole thing kind of spins around yeah, and it, yeah. floats up. So you're yeah. you're above the galaxy. Then you're kind of tipped around at 90 degrees to, to be facing down on the galaxy's um, disc, if you like. And it's kind of... Whoa, yeah, it's yeah, pretty it's, good. it's cool. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm going to uh, spin off of that one to say, on what, what is your favourite logo variation? Oh, um, that's ah, I oh, ah, you you pulled that one on me, didn't you? No kind of thought at all. I I really I really really like the original diamond logo. I think I think it's 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 just a a, a brilliant piece of seventies design that for me has always been synonymous. With Doctor Who, some of the mm. others can come and go, um, but that one is, yeah. That, again, that's the one I would pin on my lapel. Yeah. What about yeah. you? Um, well, I do. I do have quite have a fondness for uh, McCoy's with the way it's like. <laughs> yeah, in, you see, I, big... I hated that when it first came out. <laughs> oh, oh, it's Doctor Who's gone all pop, but yeah. I do like it. I, and I, then, I, you I know, actually, Doctor mm. is like you know almost graffitied on um i i like the 13th one um because it just mm. somehow seems to fit brilliantly it does. with everything you know mm. it, it i like the the font with the little sort of you know the edges are not i do like a light font and, you know and and the lines at the end um and you know it looks great on the collection sets and you know on on books it's just it's quite you know, elegant yeah yeah it is and normally i quite like a chunky font um, but yeah i think i mean from a branding perspective generally you want something that really shouts out that yeah. screams and and the big designs and the the big blocky fonts like you know they they really do shout out mm. and you could argue that 13th doctor's logo is a little bit more subtle because it's a yeah. thinner font but actually it, it 
it, it does work, I think. You know, it almost goes against all the rules of branding. Yes, it does, yeah. And yet it works, yeah. you know, because it is identifiably Doctor Who. You see it, even if you see it in the corner of your eye. And it's generally it generally tends to be gold, doesn't it? It's it's yeah. gold on a even on a light or a dark background. Yeah. And it's, you still know exactly what it is when you see it. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely logo, yeah. Mm. Um, and they do that like, nice clever thing with the O as well. So the line going through the yeah. O, you sort of flip it, and it's like the, the sort of symbol for, for, for female. So it's... Yeah. Yes. quite a nice little touch there. Yes, it was probably deliberately mm. done like that. Yeah. I imagine so, yeah. Um, a question here from Max Blake, who's at Mex Bloke. What is the one piece of extended media that you'd show to someone to try and get them into Doctor Who? Oh, I saw this question earlier, actually, and I did have a little think about this. Um, do you want to go? Because have you got something? Um <laughs> You'd show to someone. Uh, yeah. So is he is Ma- is Max asking if it's a, a visual? Uh, is he asking for a friend? Do you think? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay. Well, I'll. T- Ooh, crikey. Um, mm. I I would I would think actually it would depend on the person you're you're showing it to. Yeah. And you know if you think this I really want to get my mate into Doctor Who but you know they never watch telly they don't never watch sci-fi or whatever I don't know but but because they do maybe, read a lot of comics perhaps. Yes, that's, I was so maybe there might be people who it's unlikely I suppose mm. but you know they might like to just read books of Doctor Who or, or comics you know I I only really watch Grogu in Star Wars mm. you know um, but then I wouldn't necessarily read a comic of it, you know. Um, so yes, I think I think it would depend on the person. Yeah, um, it's it's a bit of a bit of a cop out answer in a way, isn't I'm gonna, it? But. Yeah, <laughs> Max, I want you to uh, come yes. and give us your Tell answer us, Max. to that. Tell us, um, yeah. And this will be a test to see if you're listening as well. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, do you um, know, what? I mean, it's an interesting question, isn't it? Because obviously, the you know the, the extended universe of Doctor Who is expanding even more so than, yeah. than it ever was, and yeah, you know, I think as we move into the new era with with the the, the whole Disney deal and and you know Sony and Bad Wolf and that, it's just going to get massive. Yeah, uh, if we get spin off shows, they're going to have their own EU. There's going to be connections, crossovers, you know, they and, and so many more old Doctors and old companions who could have interweave you know when you look at um interweaving storylines and you look at something like big finish where they've really mined that field and yes, produced yeah. an extensive crop of you know such bounteous stuff, stuff. <laughs> i was running out of, out of sim- yeah. similes there, but, <laughs> yeah but you know what i mean it's um i mean yeah i, I mean i i think i think i think the comics actually would be a really good one generally because yeah. they give you an idea of the, the again, each visual style is different, but you know, you just have to open a Doctor Who comic, see the police box, see the Doctor, see some mad alien, you know, sort of clawing their way mm. out of the panel, and that will give you a good feel for the adventure and the sci-fi and the scope and the yeah. fantasy and the dynamic nature yeah. of Doctor Who. I think the, as the well. The comics, I think, yeah, that's <coughs> probably um, a good answer. You know, the, the DWM ones are, are really good. Mm. You know, for, for any Doctor. And then the the Titan series. I mean, I particularly like the Thirteenth Doctor mm, ones, mm. Uh, and the the Twelfth Doctor stuff was was good. And and I mean, they all were really. I, I remember the Tenth Doctor yeah. stuff. It got a bit kind of heavy, Did and, it? and it was talking <clears throat> about like, um, was it like what do they call it? It was some sort of weird um, time uh, theory in it or something. And I remember right. thinking. I think you're trying to be a bit clever here, mm. and I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> no um, idea what's happening. <laughs> so that that series sort of fizzled out a bit for me in the end, uh, and I and I didn't read all of the eleven mm. sort because of, it was you know at one point that each Doctor had a, a you know monthly series, mm. you know, and then they would do what the Titan crossovers. comics was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, you know, and then there'd be specials of like the fourth Doctor or the three or you know whatever. So there's a huge range, um, and, it, and it's very mm. much uh, not at the moment, um, and hopefully it'll pick up again. Um, so yeah, but probably one of the one of mm. the comics I'd go for there. I think also comics are quite easy to get into, aren't they? They're they're, yeah. they're very quick. You can cover a lot of space in a very short yeah, period you, of time. Yeah, you could do so. one of the the collections, mm. you know, in in a night, or you know, the DWN ones in a. In Whereas a give someone events, a, a big you know. finish to to listen to, yeah, you know, that's that's a commitment. A couple you know, of days so, on that, yeah, and it and they might not 
really like it. You know, no, like, oh, I don't no. listen to this, mate. No, no, yeah. no. Yeah, comic. Yeah. There you go, comics. That's that's my answer. Yeah. Um. So one from Paul Phipps Williams here, who's at Mister Phipps. This is probably um not one for you, unfortunately, Paul. But uh, I like it's the fine, question. Mate. Yeah, I'll just um, uh, do my own thing. Don't worry the best about meet it. and greet experiences. Around. Best meet and greet experiences you've ever had. Meet and greet. Oh, with like, a Doctor uh, Who. Yeah. Yeah. Um, luminary yeah yeah so not just generally meet and greet no, no. well when i met you you know that, <laughs> there you go was, that, that was a good one, one. that yeah. was memorable <laughs> <laughs> um well I've, I've met a couple of uh doctors now uh so back at the 50th event uh met matt and jenna um, had a had photo with them and stuff. Um, Matt was was from watching uh, as we were queuing. He was great with the kids, mm. um, you know, re- and really good with them. Um, and he, you know, he was nice. He was he was uh, you know friendly and polite. It was probably a bit. I mean, it is an odd uh, you know scenario, and some people mm. sort of seem to take to it more than than others. Um, you know, but he was cool. He'd, he'd had his hair shaved short for that film he did. Yeah, um, and he he probably hadn't filmed his end yeah i don't know actually it doesn't matter uh and jenna was was lovely jenna is quite um uh sort of guarded i suppose mm. you know she's not sort of uh, get off me <laughs> she like that well not not like that but uh apparently some people stand been, back um, three meters yeah well apparently whatever you want me to sign been. put it on one of those telescopic pole things <laughs> with a claw on the end <laughs> Well, apparently some people have yeah. been awful to her at, yeah, at conventions yeah. and inappropriate and stuff. That's and, not nice, you know, is it? She, it's why she doesn't do many of them. Mm. Um, so, yeah, she, she was nice. Uh, and then uh, had a very brief, um, very, very brief conversation with um, Colin Baker uh, and, and Peter Davison as they walked past. And so we were queuing to meet Matt. Colin said, oh, what, what are you mm. doing here? And we said, we're, you know, we're going to go meet Matt. And, and he said, oh, well, that's exciting. And I said, do you want to join us? And he said, well, well, you know, I'd love to, but, you know, I've got to go and do something. <laughs> um, so that was fun. Did Peter uh, Davison hold up signs saying he's not all that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wasn't doing that. It's but, not all that good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then... Uh, Obviously, I and then at last year at the Comic Con in in mm. London, uh, I met uh, Jody and, and Mandip, um, and uh, y- you know both of them were were brilliant. Mm. You know, Jody really made everyone kind of feel special, and you know it was you, you don't get along with them at all, but it was just yeah. You know, she she obviously was loving it, uh, and and you know Mandip too, and you know everyone came away feeling kind of, you know really happy and you know yeah. they, they make you feel like even just for those couple of moments that you know you're you know you're special it, yeah it's only mm. you and you know jody always sort of said something kind of complimentary or personal to, to everyone i think you know yeah, which, yeah, which is yeah. really nice as well you know yeah so yeah it was those those two so yeah paul if, if, if not you paul paul phipps williams if you've got any let paul, us know yeah you, yeah, you, yeah you've yeah. missed out haven't you paul no yeah. i haven't actually because i'm going to tell you a story now my Ooh, friend have i not heard this no 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 you haven't heard oh. this one obviously i haven't i haven't really been to conventions and things so i've never no. done the meet and greet as such so whether it actually qualifies as a meet and greet i don't know but um but when i was um when i was in my early 20s right i used to work so this is um this is kind of late 90s really uh, mid to late nineties, when there was no Doctor Who, it was the Wilderness Years, right? And it was, it, was, it might have even been pre Paul McGann actually with the Eighth Doctor movie. Anyway, cut long story short, right? So uh, I used to work in this shop, and it, and we, you know, it was, a, it was a TV video shop, right? Rental shop and what have you. And uh, and occasionally we would get some really old ex rental videos, st- video machines, VHS recorders. Ladies and gentlemen, right? Google it. Stack them on a on a couple of shelves and just knock them out. You know, dirt cheap. You know, ex rentals. You know, fifty quid, hundred quid, or whatever it is. Buy one, take it home. You know, three month warranty. That sort of stuff, right? And um, and 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 this guy came in, and and I recognised him pretty quickly. Actually, I thought, you know, you do that sort of double take. Is it? Is it? He sort of looked from another angle. Is it? No, it can't be. Can't be. Can't be. Yeah, it is. And I'll tell you what, and given that today is Star Wars Day, it's a good one because the fellow's name was Leslie Schofield, right? Now, you may not know Leslie Schofield, but he was in The Face of Evil, right? I can't remember the, the name of the character he played, but he was a dude there. And he was also, I think he's, he's done another part in Doctor Who, but I can't remember exactly what it was without Googling it. But he did, um, 
he, he was also in Blake Seven, the very the, the second episode of Blake Seven, where he played a really nasty space captain on on a prison ship, which I I watched again quite recently actually. And he was also in Star Wars. He was one of the Death Star um, commanders in uh, in the original Star Wars oh, film right. Episode Four. Um, and he's I think actually he's the guy who tells. Um, uh, Grand Moff Tarkin, Peter Cushing's, ca- Peter Cushing's character, that in the X-Wings, you know, the rebel forces look like they might actually be able to find a weakness. So if they listened right. to him, the Death Star would never have blown up and we'd never oh. have had sequels and things like that. <laughs> so, you know, so, you know, and he always said that thing, but he, even then, right, and this is the other part of the story, right, is he was also really well known for a children's TV series, which was which is called Johnny Briggs, right? It was kind of like a sort of Tracy Beaker style, not, mm. you know, not the same setup as Tracy Beaker, but it was kind of done from that sort of very realistic drama type type point of view. And he played Johnny Briggs's dad. And so he was quite, quite well known to kids of a certain generation. And in Doctor Who magazine, there was so I'm pulling a few threads together, right? There was this thing like... Um, uh, it was almost like a, a sort of watch Johnny Brig- uh, who's seen Johnny Briggs as dad. You know, well, I saw him in here, and I saw him there, and I saw him, right. you know, whatever. So well, after I um, served, you know, sold him his video recorder in uh, in in a shop, and I, I didn't make any sort of mention of to you know that recognise him or anything like that. Well, I didn't until he signed his name, and then I said, "You're Leslie Schofield." I thought you were, you know, and sort of, you know, just had a not, not so much a chat because I wanted to take his money really and just get it in the till before I started. <laughs> take his lunch money. before I frightened him off. You know what I mean? Otherwise, my boss would have shattered at me or something like that. But he, I mean, he's really nice. He's really nice about it. And you know, I, I did I did briefly ask him more about Star Wars than than, than Doctor Who because you know, I, and, and you know, I said it must be really good to be in that. He's like, yeah, it was great, you know, and blah blah blah. And and he said that, and I can't remember exactly how it went. But then he started talking to me about you know, oh, that's right. I, I, Kind of said to him, "What, what are you up to now? You, you got much on and stuff." And he's like, um, "Actually, I've just been cast in EastEnders, right? Because he was in EastEnders, right, for quite a while right. after after that point." And I'm like, "Oh, congratulations! You know, that's very nice." And he goes, "The reason I got the video recorder, he says, so I can tape it." So I can watch myself back in it. So he's clearly not one of these uh, actors who's like, "Oh, I hate watching myself on TV." No, uh, no, 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 no. Leslie Schofield is a guy who wants to watch himself on TV. Yeah. So that was brilliant. So afterwards, yeah. right? So after he took his video and went away with it, I um, immediately right started composing in my head a letter to Doctor Who magazine and got home and I wrote it and I kind of put in, you know, I'd, I'd met Leslie Schofield, you know, Johnny Briggs' dad. Yes, add me to that Johnny Briggs spot list if you like, and. Um, you know, I, I might have embellished it slightly just to make it publishable or more attractive to the editors, and I didn't think they'd publish it, but they they did. Oh, so they? it appeared in the Doctor Who magazine for the next the next issue, right? And um, and I, and I'm back at work, right? Do 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 my thing at work, and who walks in? Leslie Schofield again, right? Is uh, that video you sold me? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, how was it? You know, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, I, I need another one. You know, for my mate. So um, blah blah blah. And then and I said, yeah, no problem. Come here and we can sort you out. You know, sort you out. So he did that. And he goes, you wrote in a Doctor Who magazine, didn't you? I went, uh, yeah, yeah. He goes, yeah, okay. You embellished it slightly, didn't you? I went, yeah, just a tad. Just a little bit. Yeah. This is all right. I said, are you offended? He goes, no, no, no. No, it's fine. Honestly, it's, it's, it's really good. I mean, you, you didn't exactly, you know, it wasn't an untruth. Just a little bit of embellishment. There's nothing embarrassing there, I think. So, and then we had a we had a better chat. Then you know, and I I, I did ask him about sort of you know working in the face, face of evil and a bit more about EastEnders and whether he'd you know sort of done much then. And, and we did actually have the good chat that I told Doctor Who magazine we'd already had. Do you know right. what I mean? So, so it, but it was it was really lovely, and I oh, you know that's, and that's, really that's kind of stayed with me there because he just yeah, yeah. you know just a uh, guy. So there you go, yeah. um, Leslie Schofield. You know, Brilliant. it's uh, it, it top actor top bloke you know and uh, very happy memory if you like that's nice uh, i'm gonna as you've been telling i'm gonna add um mm. bernard cribbins here uh, oh well done it, it, yeah it wasn't really it's not really a meet and greet but um he was a friend of the family yeah exactly yeah and uh for, for quite a long time really actually mm. like, i remember him sitting in the um kitchen of our, our old uh house we used to have a little um what you call them, like uh you know, an island table type thing, you know, kind of came out from the wall, you know, a bar type thing, you know, mm. sitting sitting there and, and chatting and stuff. And, and, you know, you'd be go fishing with my dad 
And then, um, you know, I'd see him at various, uh, you know, fishing stuff that my dad would put yeah, on. Yeah, was yeah. Sitting and sitting and talking to him and his, his wife, a um, uh, uh, dude that dad put on for, um, uh, it's, uh, what they called, there's a paratroopers uh, charity that he was quite involved in. Yes, with Bernard. yeah. Um, their name escapes me at the minute. Um, and, and, you know, spending quite a while chatting with him there. And uh, he was at my my dad and my stepmom's wedding as well, and and um, you know then a couple of years ago there was a fishing day in his sort of honour, um, mm. and he was he was given various gifts for his his you know contribution of fishing and stuff, and he always remembered me, and, and you know even if he didn't actually really like remember my name and stuff, he always made know, out that he did. <laughs> yeah, and he he knew I was, mm. was Pete, Pete's son. And, uh, you know, we'd always have a bit of a chat and stuff. And, you know, my, my dad and my stepmom went to his, his funeral and things. So, you know, he was, and, and they spoke probably weekly on the phone and stuff, but he was always a really nice guy. And, mm, you know, mm. he was just, uh, you know, the, the stories are, you know, about him are, are true. You know, he was just, just a, a great guy, really. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, yeah. so that was a bit more than a meet and greet there, but I'm going to. No, that's a brilliant one, I think. Yeah. Um, we've just got um, time for mm. a couple more questions, probably. Um, so uh, there's a few here from uh, our friend Cooper Hillier, who lives in Australia. A few. He always um, supplies more than one. He does, it's, yeah. it's like used like a ninja questioning technique. Cooper's um, given us a few uh, full podcast topics here, actually, <laughs> um, which is good. Uh, but I'm going to go for yeah. the one here that's just a bit of a question. Uh, Favourite Doctor's outfit. Favorite doctor's outfit. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's an interesting one. Hmm. Are you going to go on this one? Have oh, you, okay. You got... I can. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, I need to think yeah. about it. Because <laughs> I haven't seen this question. Right. I need to consider. So I shall put my interested face on while in the background the wheels are turning. Okay. Well, in news that will probably surprise no one, I'm going to say the Thirteenth Doctor's outfit. <coughs> um, mm. As soon as the that first photo of her on the hillside with the sun and stuff and the TARDIS in the mm. background was was revealed I thought she looked so cool um, and it was such a kind of fresh uh, you know design um, mm -hmm. and, and I loved the you know the variations on it over the, the time with the, the different coloured t-shirts and the jumpers and stuff like that um, and for me kind of the Doctor you know ha a sort of you know, they, they wear an outfit and it doesn't change and, and that's sort of part of them, mm. really. So when, um, you know, like, um, Ten had his brown and blue suit, I mean, I always thought Ten in his brown suit with his long coat looked really cool mm. as well. Um, and then when Eleven and Twelve came along and they changed quite a bit more, you know, the outfit, I didn't dislike that at all. You know, I, I, I really liked uh, Eleven in his long purple yeah. coat that he had and, and um, he had a green coat with big, big um, you know, lapels. And, mm. you know, I like this sort of what they call cosmic hobo that, um, you know, Capaldi had at one point, the ch check trousers and stuff. Um, but I kind of like the Doctor having this um, almost sort of, you know, superhero type mm. thing, you know, this this uh, defined look, this, this um, you know, the, the, a silhouette sort of thing, mm. you know, that, that doesn't change um, and, and is, you know, very identifiable with them. Um, so, yeah, I, I really like um, 13s, but I also particularly like um, uh, the third Doctor stuff as well. And I'm aware that the older Doctors w would sort of change a bit more you know, regularly, mm. and perhaps it's more... But, but still, the silhouette, like you say, with the third yeah. Doctor, and regardless of what colour jacket you wore, it was still recognisable. Sometimes you'd have a cape, yeah. sometimes you wouldn't. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the big, you know, the cravat and, yeah, and yeah. the frills yeah, and shirts. stuff. And, you know, I love that sort of, uh, you know, slightly uh, over-the-top, you know, smooth style that he had. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was not one that I, I dislike. Mm. I mean, I suppose, you know, the Ninth <coughs> Doctors is... is I, see, I kind of like... Um, I like costumes of mm. people, by which I mean... So, for example, I watched... I like The Walking Dead. <clears throat> but everyone in that just wears jeans and a shirt. It's, you know... I'm wearing a jean, jeans and a shirt. You know, so I like, you know, an mm. outfit, a costume... You know, and, and yeah. the thirteenth Doctor wears a a you know a costume. She in, does. In, you yeah, know, yeah. It's not, and I don't mean that like it's clownish or anything mm. like that. But you know, it's it's more than just jeans and a shirt, which is what the ninth Doctor wore, and it suited him. But it it, it was very kind of. You, you know, could just pick it up down. from anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah which, I, which was the know, idea, wasn't it? I which think. it was the idea. Mm. Yeah. Um. You know, and and you know, the tenth Doctor wore a suit, but you know, it was 
stylish and you know look cool on him mm. you know so i like that so yeah how about you for me um i've been thinking while you've been saying that actually and i i agree with all of those i think they they and, and all the points you raised so i'm not going to go over it again but for me thinking about it i think my top iconic most favorite doctor who outfit is is the fourth doctor's in season 18 so that's um, the Leisure Hive to Legopolis, that that heavy, dark, burgundy mm. outfit, which is more of a costume than his previous one, because he, he always yes. wore different jackets, even though the silhouette, as you said, was the same. There was always the, the you know the floppy hat, the scarf, yeah. the jacket, you know, usually boots or trousers, obviously, because why would you not? But <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, it would have to be that one. That for me is the yeah is the ultimate Tom Bacon. I know it's not popular with everybody, but. For me personally, I think that was because that was that was when I decided I was going to become a Doctor Who fan. I and I right. and and there's a lot of presence in that in that costume as well. I mean, Tom Baker has a lot of presence anyway, right? He's a big character, and his Doctor was at its peak. And and but but giving him that outfit, where in in a season where he is more brooding, you know, and perhaps pissed off than he ever was really because i don't think he, he was enjoying things anymore and I, you know and all sorts going on in his personal life and he was obviously working towards the end of being in a show that he loved or had loved and in, in it, but all of that informs the doctor's character in that series you know for better or worse and you know i love it so, and, and actually going back it sort of goes back to our first question doctor dark or light but that is probably the doctor at his darkest but mm. it's um yeah, that, that's yeah. the one for me, I think. I, I really like that. I like all of them, to be fair. You know, the, yeah. the Doctor's outfit is 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 at best when it's sort of idiosyncratic, I think. When it's when it's not quite right for the for the year that the Doctor's in. Yeah. Like you yeah. know, even with the third Doctor, yes, it's very seventies, but it's almost like um it's almost too much so yeah. it's two yeah. 70s i yeah. like i like the 11th doctor's geography teacher outfit as well you know it's a smart short jacket um but it's almost like you know and, it, and, and it, but it's got a bow tie and who wears a bow tie <laughs> right that that's the thing it's like so it, it's like you know the doctor has gone to some efforts to get it right but in doing so gets it slightly wrong yeah. and when that's apparent i think it becomes more more interesting like with the eighth yeah. doctor in a way i mean it's just a fancy dress costume that he pulls out of somebody's yeah, locker yeah. while bill <laughs> hickok you know and again with the thir the thirteenth the thirteenth doctors um yes it, it it is absolutely right for her and, and it is a costume but she just you know it's assemblage from all the things she liked in a, in a charity in, shop in a, yeah cha you charity know shop, which yeah. is beautiful for the 13th doctor's yeah, character yeah. you know taking the best out of everybody's cast-offs you know yeah. i i love that idea it's mm -hmm. it's so so strong so in terms of the the kind of the, the thought behind it and you know it's the 13th but in the actual visual appearance it's the fourth doctor's final costume fine that's good yeah all right, brilliant. <clears throat> um, well, I've really enjoyed doing this. This has been fun. Oh, is that it? We finished? Yeah. Well, oh, I've, I've, just getting into it. The, I know, <clears throat> I'm just yeah, getting well, into I've, my stride. I've, I've noticed the time. But I've actually got to say, do some work, yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, <laughs> we'll, we'll do one of these again. Um, you know, it was a lot we'll, of fun, that. Tweet, yeah. and we'll get some more questions in. So we've got some other... Mm topics from people uh, most of Cooper yes. uh, that we can look at <laughs> and um, we'll start uh, working on, on those for future episodes. We're still not going to pay him a fee. No, just keep generating yeah. ideas for yeah. us, Coop, but, uh, but uh, just wing them in, wing them in. Let's have them. So, as always, thank you for listening and uh, we'll catch you next time on Who Corner to Corner. Indeed. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Bye for Bye. now. Bye.